I'm Ron Riddell and my son Travis and uh, we've been farming on this farm since 1987. We've been in this barn for almost five years now. Uh, two robots, uh, sand bedded, uh, freestall and flush barn. We're, we're the same as uh, most traditional barns now where we use a plate cooler to cool, help, help with cooling on our milk and, uh, and then we reuse that water uh, to, for drinking for the cows. Um, this barn is uh, a flush barn, which uh, means we, we clean our alleys with recycled flush water. So uh, the way that works um, is uh, every four hours a flush valve will pop and, uh, and we'll clean a single alley where flush, uh, sand, sorry, sand alleys clean more often than that. Uh, the water travels to a, a new manure tank that we built with this barn and where we, we uh, suck top water from a raft, uh, a, floating, a pump that's floating on a raft, and uh, we, it, we transfer it to a second manure tank where we suck top water off again, a settling tank, and then the, the third spot, uh, it moves water from, from there to a, uh, an old fuel tank, and that's where the storage of flush water stays, so it's a closed loop and uh, we recycle all the water. So everything in the barn is being used to, to clean the floors. So we have uh, water meters for both hot and cold water throughout the entire barn. So we measure everything that's used on, uh, from just drinking water alone to uh, each robot, both hot and cold for either milking, uh, which is cleaning, tea cleaning and things like that, as well as we separate and we can also tell how much water is used to clean the floor and the robot in general. Uh, we also know how much water is used to uh, to clean the milk tank every other day and for circuit cleanings to clean the entire milking system three times a day. Uh, so what we like about that is we can kind of monitor each one individually and see if there's any abnormalities when we track it. If there are, we'll look at that and see maybe we can address something. Uh, for instance, a valve's not working properly on one of the wash valves and uh, we're using more water than we should. So it kind of helps with early detection as well to, just to make sure everything's running well. With the flush valves, we also have uh, sensors that will only allow it to run at certain times of the day. So for example, when we transfer from pit one to pit two, that doesn't have to happen every day. And we can set it up so that it will only work uh, during off-peak hours when electricity usage is very, it's cheaper. Uh, so we kind of have that in mind. Also, there's ultrasonic sensors to control the tank levels. So uh, like again, it doesn't have to run every day and it will only run when required. Uh, when it's the most cost effective. So. We transfer approximately um, 800,000 gallons per week from pit one to pit two that's used for flush cleaning of the barn. So it's fairly substantial, so we're very conscious of when those, when that transfer takes place. Well, water is a precious mm -hmm. resource. And uh, I think everyone needs to maintain a focus of keeping clean water clean. I don't know, what would you say? Yeah, I'd say I think in southwestern Ontario with the Great Lakes so close, we yeah. maybe feel like we can take it for granted. Whereas if you read in different articles, a lot of dairy farmers, especially in California, are having a lot of trouble now with uh, making sure they can get enough water for their herds and so on. Uh, water rights is a big deal there. In southwestern Ontario, we haven't really seen that yet. So I think being proactive uh, when it comes to water use and water efficiency is always a good thing. Um, because in the next 10 or 15 years, or maybe more than that, we don't know what it will be like, but it's always better to be more efficient and proactive, especially with water, something that everybody uses. So. It tends to take for granted.